This video is going to be a sort of check-in video for the NeoVim from Scratch series. So if you're following along with the series, um, you will know that we just finished up the tree sitter section. And so what did that do? That gave us a uh, nice syntax highlighting for NeoVim. All right, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to answer some questions about uh, some, some of the questions that the community, I guess, has been asking me about the config and other just NeoVim and NeoVim plugin related things. I'm also going to really quick point you over to the App Machine Discord server where you can kind of get support and also if you just want to kind of join a community, it's at machine with the at symbol there and there's a good amount of people here uh, with topics that you're probably interested in if you're paying attention to this series, things like NeoVim, LunarVim, uh, Emacs if you're that kind of person, Linux and just other tech related things. So it's a pretty active community and I recommend checking it out. Uh, again, I'll leave a link in the description for this. I'm going to leave the links in the description for basically everything that I go over in this video. So make sure to check that out. Anyway, uh, so before I get into what I plan to do with the series, um, what I wanted to do was answer a few questions. So the first question is, where am I finding all of these plugins? People have been asking me, like, how am I keeping up with a lot of new plugins? And, you know, where do you find the best ones? So what I recommend you do is, and this is, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to give you a secret. Probably you, you don't know this. Um, you might, you might know this, but I, I'm going to bet, I don't know, maybe 90% of people who are watching this video don't know this. So what you can do is you can go check out Awesome NeoVim. It's a repository. Now, that's not the full secret. Maybe you already know about this repository, but... Um, if you don't, what you can do here is you can just head over to the awesome NeoVim repository. It'll be under Rocker Boo here. And there's just tons and tons and tons of plugins. And you can go under a section. So you'll see here at the top it's broken up um, as like a table of contents here. And you can find ones for like note taking, color schemes, um, I guess uh, like commenting, um, you know, whatever it may be, a file explorer. And then just go, you say you want a file explorer, for instance. Go check out what's kind of on offer here. So MVim Tree, NNN, uh, Lur, so on and so forth. You know, install some of these plugins, find out if you like them or not. And yeah, so this is where I basically find all of my plugins at, is this repository here. I'll just, you know, see if anything gets added to the readme. It's just a readme, right, with a ton of links in it. So just just see what gets added to the readme and see if that new plugin is something that you're interested in just check in if you're you know you feel like updating your config i would i would come here first now the secret is is that if you search awesome anything like if you go into google search or whatever and you search awesome neovim or awesome rust or awesome react or awesome zsh plugins or whatever it may be you're usually going to get some big GitHub README repository with a table of contents. I guess this is just a thing that people do. And there'll just be a ton of, uh, of, of like plugins or technologies associated with uh, or libraries or whatever it may be, right? So if you have some technology and you're interested in essentially uh, all of the surrounding technologies of that thing, Search awesome name of technology and just click on usually the first GitHub repository that shows up. There'll usually be just some big thing here, some big readme for you to kind of go over. So anyway, yeah, that's that's kind of, I guess, the secret that I wanted to share with people. Maybe it's not a secret. Maybe it's something that I, you know, I was only left out of. But yeah, you, you can do that. So that the, uh, the next thing that I'm going to go over is I'm going to be talking about what I plan to do with the series going forward. So we just finished up Tree Sitter, and I talked about what that kind of is. And if you're really interested, go watch the video. Now, the next thing we would end up doing is auto pairs, then comments get signed, so on and so forth. Um, you know, I, I don't have a ton of time to always be, I guess, uh, there are other videos and stuff that I want to make, and I do plan on finishing this series. But what I plan to do is kind of go over some more important plugins and then maybe fill in the gaps in the future. So if you want to add, for instance, auto pairs, I don't know if I'm going to do an entirely dedicated video to that because all you have to do, if, you, if you've been following along with the series, then you know how to 
go through and add plugins very easily now. And it should be obvious anyway, just going through, checking out the branch and seeing what I did. But let's talk about really quick the, the mindset I'm in if I wanna add a new plugin. What we're gonna do, and I'm gonna check out the next branch so you're gonna see, but say I wanna add the, uh, say I wanna add the auto pairs plugin. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Lua, and I did tree here so you can you know see everything. I'm gonna open up Lua user uh, plugins, whoops. And then I'm gonna just add it to this list here, right? Just somewhere on this list. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a file under Lua user, just like all these other files here, and I'm just gonna name it autopairs.lua, right? And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna require that new module here in the init.lua file. So let's take a look at what that looks like when I'm finished. So, and this is gonna be every single branch after this, right? Um, there's, there's really nothing more to it. Now, what's useful is that I have essentially given uh, like a, a same default config. And I recommend more plugin authors, I guess, do this, is just like put some like super sane default thing right at the top of their plugin and then just, just so the user can kind of copy and paste it. Uh, some do, some don't. But yeah, so I, I would just recommend that, I guess, for if you're a new plugin author or something like that, that's just what I would recommend. And so now, anyway, I'm just gonna show you exactly what I just showed you, right? So Lua user, I can't type today, but Lua user plugins, right? So I kind of did that pretty fast, but you can see Lua user plugins, right? Okay, and you can see now it's added right here. And I'm just gonna save to install because that's how this config works. We can just save this file and install it and update things. And the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna see that I have Lua, I can't type today, Lua user auto pairs. And here is my same default config. Uh, the other question is, people have kind of asked me about this little snippet on top of every single plugin. So you'll see like, okay, you'll see local status okay, name of module, this can be any name you want, right? So like you're naming your module here. Um, and then we do something called a P call. Now what that is, how you can kind of read that is protected, protected call, right? And so what a P call or a protected call does is if it doesn't find this, right? It, what it does is it takes a function and, and then it, uh, the arguments pass to the function. And it, like if this errors out, so if require can't find MVM auto pairs, then the status won't be okay and then we just return. So this is just a way that we don't get any errors. You could also do, if you, you know, if you wanted to, you could do something like print and then put, you know, whatever message you wanna put in here that says like, I was not able to load MVM auto pairs and see if it's there. So if it's not there, like say if that did happen, this is another directory that I want you to be aware of. And I went over this in the plugins, uh, video, but I, I just think that people should be aware of it. First of all, dot local share, you should just, you should be aware that dot local share exists, right? Dot local share is where tons of programs keep data about themselves that you have installed on your system. So anyway, we're going to go into dot local share envim. And so if we do PWD in here, you're going to see dot local share envim. And here's where basically, look, you can see like other, other plugins that I have installed, things like dap install or harpoon or this LSP servers thing um, that's from the LSP manager or whatever. That's where the LSP servers are. That's where the data is for that project NVIM, uh, sessions, um, whatever else, right? It's all in here. So that's, that's where your data is for your plugins. Uh, where your plugins are is under there, under, if you're using Packer, under pack, Packer, and then we'll just go here and then you can see opt and start. Again, opt is for optional and start is for start. And if you want a better breakdown for all this, then you can go watch the video I have on the plugin deep dive. But yeah, if, if you can't find it, then it's probably not in here for some reason or another. Now, the next thing I'll say is that if you find that a plugin is starting all the time and it's, it's happening like, and you, you don't have it installed, it's not in your Packer it's not in your plugin.lua file and, and you, you haven't added it to Packer. 
then you probably have it in your start. It's probably from some old config you had or something like that. So for instance, like if you, you know, I can't think of a plugin off the top of my head, but sometimes plugins auto start themselves. And if you put it in the start directory, they usually like will. And then you're, you're gonna get some weird unexpected behavior. So that's why I recommend just going in here every now and then and kind of being sure of what plugins you have installed, that this is where they'll all be. And again, they're just GitHub repositories. So the exact same thing that you see, for instance, on TreeSitter, look at all these files, see them, right? And then if we go into MVim TreeSitter, right? It's basically all of the same files that are here are in here, but we'll also do git or not git, we'll do ls-a. So you can see all of the uh, dot files as well. So these, these are just GitHub repositories. That's all your plugins are. So that was another question is, where are my plugins and all that kind of thing. I guess another thing really quick that I'll, uh, that I'll explain is that under cache, uh, there's also an MVim directory under cache. And there's things like log files that are usually kept in here. Now, nobody really does this, uh, you know, super consistently. This is where things like log files are supposed to go, in my opinion. Uh, you can see some other plugins like Telescope, for instance, doesn't care, and it puts it in the data file, uh, folder here. Um, and that's the standard data folder would be share and the name of your program usually. Telescope decides, I'm just gonna put stuff in here, I don't care. Um, but a lot of other ones like uh, DAP or Harpoon or whatever else, right? They'll usually keep their logs inside of .cache and Vim. And if you wanna open one up and just see, like if you open up LSP log, and you can see if, if you like one of your LSPs not working or something like that, you can come in here and you can get some logs about it. And that might be helpful if you wanna push put an issue in on GitHub for you know whatever reason that your LSP or your language server is not working. So that's another directory that I wanted you to be aware of. Uh, this is kind of like the XDG standards or whatever. There's a standard path for data that's in dot local share. There's a standard path for caching that's in dot cache. There's a standard path for configuration and that's in dot config, right? So yeah, that's just something that uh, another kind of thing that you may not be aware of that hopefully now you are. All right, so what else with the series? Yeah, I think I've mentioned before I kind of went on that tirade that I wasn't gonna do a video per uh, per branch. Now, maybe I will in the future. I'll go back and I'll kind of fill them in, but I wanna skip over to things like null ls, lua line, and witch key and stuff like that. And again, just leave the rest for homework. So yeah, uh, just kind of expect those videos to come out. And uh, when I have time, uh, when I'm not working on other things, I'll come in and I'll, you know, fill in the rest of the series. But I think most people are interested. I think people definitely want like a more comprehensive null LS video, for instance. Um, and I don't think there's a good one out there on Lua line either. So yeah, I, I hope, um, if I didn't explain this already, I'm not sure that I did, but if I, I guess I just, I might've forgot, but really quick. If you are looking, uh, if you want documentation for a particular plugin and where I find that the, where I usually like find like a deep dive into a plugin, right? Or if I'm doing a deep dive into a plugin and I'm not just doing like the basic stuff, just setting it up. What I'll usually go do is I'll go into the plugin uh, repository. I'll click on doc. And then there's usually something in doc for me to kind of go take a look at for a deeper dive into the plugin. So for instance, we're on the tree sitter one we're under doc and then the document that they give us here. And you'll see things that just aren't in the readme, like um, like highlight groups and stuff like that. So if you're creating like a color scheme or something, you know, you, and you want it to be tree sitter compliant, you want it to be able to work with tree sitter, then you're gonna need to go set all these highlight groups here. So that's, I, and this isn't in the readme, right? So this is where you can find that information. Uh, you can also find that information if you just do something like help and then like tree sitter. And I don't know if they have one for like necessarily for highlight groups, maybe this here potentially. Anyway, you should just go through all of the different uh, things. Like if we look up TS uh, constant, that would have been one. No, let's go see if it's actually in help tree 
like that. And then if we do TS constant, there usually should be something in here. Sometimes I'm just not able to find what I'm looking for perfectly. Sometimes I'll be able to find it in here. Sometimes I, I'll be able to find it over here. But yeah, just do something like help tree sitter and then maybe that would be, you know, maybe that's helpful to you. Uh, there's also ways to get help if you do something like, if you wanna understand a particular command. So if you do vim dot uh, LSP, and then I think if you, I think vim.lsp should be enough. And then you should be able to find like a bunch of LSP related stuff, for instance. Um, like if we do, like for instance, if I do like vim.lsp.buff, that's buff, buff, like this. Um, and if we do actually help for that, okay. And then you just press tab. You should be able to get help with a ton of different things, like the, like the entire LSP API, right? So for instance, if you're just like, how do I, um, how do I do formatting or something like that? You could do, you, you could look up the formatting thing. How do I go to definition? Well, you'll do vim help for vim.lsp.buff. And then like, okay, there's definition. And then you can read about it a little bit. So it doesn't really take any arguments and you can just call this thing and that's it. So you could actually just see it working. And this was another question was just kind of like some of the LSP stuff. So what we'll do is we'll just do Lua and you're always gonna have to do Lua before you run one of these LSP or not LSP, but not necessarily, well, yes, all of the LSP things, but any of these Lua based functions, right? Cause these are Lua functions. They're not uh, commands that are in, in, in Vim. They're not, like, they're not like Vim commands. So if we do like Lua Vim dot and then if we do tab, it's going to give us things. So if I start typing here, there you go. And then if we look for, let's see, definition, you won't be able to just do that, right? You're going to actually need to call it as a function and it'll just work. So that's, that's how I figured out things that, you know, I can bind to different key bindings using Lua functions instead of, you know, the classical kind of like Vim functions, things like, like all of these things, right? So that's how you can get LSP functions or to work, I guess. That's, that was another question that I ended up getting. Um, yeah, so anyway, this video is getting pretty long and I just kind of wanted to explain a few things uh, where I planned on going with the series, where you can get help, um, a few different other things that I think are secrets, but maybe there were only secrets to me for a while. But yeah, so if you are enjoying the series, um, you can support me over on GitHub. You can also uh, support me over on Patreon. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.